In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a Ruby on Rails application to render. It's going to be entirely free. And as you can see on the screen now, I have this application. It's very simple and you're just able to create new subreddits, although we're going to be doing it with posts, create a subreddit. It goes into a Postgres database, all entirely free, pretty cool. And we should be able to do it in less than 20 minutes. So we're choosing render as a platform mainly because it's entirely free and it doesn't require any credit card info if you don't want to put it in. We're going to be deploying with a number of steps. So first we're going to create a Rails 7 project. Then we're going to change SQLite 3 to Postgres. Then we're going to upload our Rails project to GitHub. And then finally deploy our app to render. We should be able to do all this fairly quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my Windows terminal. And I'm on the Linux subsystem and I recommend that you are as well. And we're going to create a new Rails project. So I'm going to go to CD Rails projects. So change directory into Rails projects. Then we're going to say Rails new render. Hit enter and that's going to create the new Rails project. Okay, so now that our Rails project has been successfully created, we have got a fresh app. So I'm going to go CD to render. So go into render. Then what we're going to do is we're going to generate a scaffold. So we're going to say Rails G scaffold. I'll bump this up so you can see it. Actually, I'll just clear first. So do clear Rails G scaffold post. And we're going to say title text body text. Hit enter. That's going to create a Rails scaffold. Then we're going to do rails db migrate. And all of these instructions are in the notion file. After that's migrated, we're going to open up in VS code. So do code dot. And as you can see, it's opening up in VS code. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to once it's opened, it's taking a little bit of time. We're going to go to still taking some time, but that's okay. We're going to go to config roots.rb. And we're going to change this to, well, we can just uncomment this line, but we need to do root post hashtag index. You can copy everything we're doing from the Notion file, by the way. And then finally, we're going to go to views layouts application.html.erb and add the simple CSS CDN. So this is going to bump up our application styling by automatically styling it. So we're going to go to app views layouts application.html.erb and add this inside there. We can get rid of this bit of, bit of HTML text. Save the file and then start the server. If everything is well and good, we should have a simple application that has a post scaffold. We should be able to create and delete posts. So let's check that out. So go to localhost 3000. That's not the right one. Localhost 3000. Okay. For whatever reason, it didn't work. We're getting this home page. It might be because we didn't save the file in config. Okay, so now that I've saved the file in roots.rb, as you can see, we've got a post scaffold, new post, hello, best title, create the post, delete the post, back to post, edit the post, it all works. Update the post, delete the post. All right, cool. So that's step one finished. As you can see, create a Rails 7 project, that's done. It's a very simple project. Your one will probably be a little bit more complex, but that's okay. Next, we're going to change SQLite 3 to Postgres. So let's open up this step. First off, run this command. It will add the Postgres gem to the gem file and also change the settings in database.yaml file. So I'm going to copy this command, go back to the terminal, stop the server, we don't need it anymore, clear, and then run this command, rails db system change to PostgreSQL. It's pretty intuitive, I'm sure you understand what it means. And <clears throat> I'm going to press yes, overwrite that file. As you can see, that command has now been run. Now that we're going to do next, we will need to install Postgres on our Linux subsystem. So we need to open up the Ubuntu terminal and run these commands. This command updates the Ubuntu packages. So run sudo apt update and it's going to, you know, update the Ubuntu packages. I'm going to enter in my password. Okay. And as you can see, it's updating. I did this recently, I think I did it yesterday, so there shouldn't be much to do, but your one might be taking longer. Next, we need to install Postgres. So this command installs Postgres. So copy this command. What are we saying? We're saying sudo apt install Postgres, postgresql dash contrib. Hit enter, that's gonna install Postgres. And then hit yes if you're prompted to. And now Postgres is installed. And now we just need to ensure that the Postgres service is still running. 
So copy this command and it's, as you can see it says sudo systemctl start postgresql.service. So that's just going to start the postgresql service. So now that postgresql is installed, we need to connect Ruby on Rails to Postgres. To do this, what I'm going to do is say clear, just to make it nice and easy. And then we're going to do Rails DB create. Rails DB create. And as you can see, it has created the two databases, render development and render test. Now, all we need to do now is run Rails DB migrate. And now that's the app perfectly done. Now there may be some errors that you're getting. Here's an error people get sometimes. And you also might get different errors. I have the solution to this error in the Notion file, so make sure to check that out if you're getting an error. So now that we have successfully switched to PostgreSQL, we can move on to step three. Now what's step three? Upload Rails project to GitHub. That's pretty easy. So all we have to do is create a new GitHub repository, then follow the commands, done. There are another common error with this, and i show you how to solve it as well in the Notion file. I really wanted to be as thorough as possible with this tutorial. So anyway, go to github.com, then we're going to create a new repository, new repository, then we're going to call it render and create the repository. Then what we're going to do is just copy all these commands and we should be able to put them in here and it should just work. Now, instead of git add readme, we're going to need to change that and we're going to need to change that to git add dot because we want to add everything, not just the readme file. So add everything that should push it all to GitHub. And as you can see, it worked. If you're getting an error username password, if it's if it's requiring that you input your username and password for GitHub, then I have the solution to that here. And basically you need to add your SSH keys to GitHub. And here's how to do that. Okay, so now that we have successfully uploaded our Ruby on Rails project to GitHub, we can carry on to step four which is to finally deploy our app to render. So it says, create a file named renderbuild.sh in your repo's bin directory. Paste the following into it and save. Okay, so let's go to our bin directory. So app config, oh no, app bin config. Okay, so bin is the one we need. Bin, re new file, render-build.sh. Perfect. Then all we need to do is copy all this and put it inside of this file. Perfect. The next thing that we need to do is to create a file named render.yaml at the root of your directory and paste in the YAML content below. This defines information about your Rails web service, along with the database that it connects to. Okay, so that's cool. So we need to create a file named render.yaml. So in the root of the directory, so click here, or you can click here, and we're going to say render.yaml. And this is Y-A-M-L, not Y-M-L, Y-A-M-L. So we're going to copy all this, put it in here, save, and that should be good for now. You can change this to your name, the appropriate names. If you want, it's not necessary. We don't have to do it. Okay. So the next thing you know what to do is to go to render.com, create an account to verify the account. So I'm going to go to render. Okay. So as you can see, I'm here going to dashboard. Then what I'm going to do, I need to zoom out. Okay. So here's the app that we had before. Now we're going to create new PostgreSQL. We're going to call it render YouTube. And then I'll just copy this in here. And that's fine. And then Oregon is in America. I am in Europe, so I need Frankfurt. And then as you can see, I'll just click free because that's why we're using render in the first place. <laughs> so after that, we're going to click create database. Okay. I'm actually not going to input the database name. We don't need to do that. Okay. So that's going to randomly generate. So hit create database. Error cannot have more than one active free tier database. Wonderful. Okay. So I need to go to render.com and delete the one I already have. So dashboard and then delete this one. So that app is going to stop working. That's unfortunate, but I'm going to basically create the same thing. This is how you create an app or delete an app in render. Okay. And then I'll just delete this web service as well, because it's probably going to give me the same error. You can't have more than web, one web service, which is fair enough. I don't know anyone else on the market that's offering Ruby on Rails hosting for free. 
So they can do what they want as long as it's free. All right, so it's free, create the database. Okay, it's creating the database. And the most important thing that you have to remember here, you have to remember your internal database URL. As you can see, it's unavailable until the database is ready. So we're gonna keep this tab here, and we're gonna keep it here, we're gonna freeze it, and so we're gonna only work on new tabs. So after we've created the Postgres database, we need to create a new web service. So we can close all these unused tabs. And yeah, we can just well, we can just go to render.com again. Even though I have it here, I just want to show you. And then go to dashboard. And then what we're going to do is go to new web service, build and deploy from a Git repository. Make sure that your GitHub account is connected to the right GitHub account. So make sure that this render, render account is connected to the right GitHub account. Because if it's connected to another, then you're not going to be able to access the correct repository. You're going to be only on different repositories. Anyway, how would you like to deploy your web service? Choose the first option, build and deploy from a Git repository. Next, connect the repository. As you can see, those are my repositories, connect, render. Unique name, yep, cool, cool, cool. And here, very important, runtime, the runtime for your web service. We need to change this to Ruby. And then we, have to, we also have to change these build commands and the start commands. So in the build commands, I'm gonna go back over here because that's where I have it written down. We need to add this. So let's have a C. So we need to say dot bin dot slash bin slash render build dot SSH or dot SH. So as you can see, that's rendering or not rendering, but using the file that we added beforehand. If we go back to VS code, this file in the bin, it's using this one. And I just realized that we have to push our changes before it's going to work. So let's push it now. Actually, no, let me add these build commands, then we'll push it afterwards. So, and then we also have to add another one in the build command, and that is Rails DB migrate. Okay, so that we've added those to the builds command. And then we, ask, we also have to add a start command, and that is to run the Rails server. So we're going to say, make sure to add your semicolons, and then say, dot bin slash rails server. So those are the build and start commands added. Now we just need to go back here and actually push those changes because I forgot to push them. So git add dot git commit dash m added render files enter and then git push. Now that's going to push to github and it's done. Okay. Now, click on free for the web service. And then here is very important as well, environment variables. So Rails master key, we have to add a Rails master key. So let's go and do that. So where's your Rails master key? Well, I don't know. I'm just joking, I do. It's in config and then master.key. So copy this, put it in there, simple enough. Then add environment variable. We're gonna call it web concurrency. And the reason that I know this is because I looked at the render docs and the value is gonna be two because that's what they recommended, but it can be different. Then we're gonna say add another environment variable, and this is the last one. And this is gonna be called database URL. And if you remember, I told you to hang on to the internal database URL. We're gonna put that in there. So copy this one to clipboard, put it in here, and that should be everything done. Let me just make sure, yes. Okay, so that's it. We can finalize and create the web service. And because we've just uploaded our new GitHub changes, uh, everything should be working and our application should be up and running. Let's see, how long has this been? It has been 16 minutes, pretty good. Right, it's better than I expected. Okay, so it's gonna take a few minutes because it's building the whole application, downloading all the gems, etc. So after that, Let's go to this link. So yeah, right now we're getting in our bad gateway, 502. But let's just wait a second. Okay, so it's running the Rails server command. We should be starting now, any second now. Yay, okay, so I refresh the page and it's working. So now we can add posts. Add the post, best title ever. Best body ever, create the post. And that's gonna be there forever. And I don't even have to pay any money, so that's pretty cool. 
So our application is working. I can delete this. I can create new one and then edit it. It's all working, pretty simple. So I've done what I said I'd do in less than 20 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, then subscribe. Make sure not to forget to like the video. It really helps me out. If you like this video, then subscribe and then I'll see you in the next one.